Hi, I'm Afton Brazzoni, founder of Scribe National. I'm here today with Laura Bodell, and this is the second interview in a series of interviews I'm doing with business owners, marketers, and communicators to talk about how their businesses have shifted recently during the coronavirus crisis. So, Laura, how are you doing? You know, I'm really well. I, um, I don't think I've ever been more grateful for having enough to eat and a, a warm place and uh, waking up in one of the most beautiful places on earth. Um, whoa, I'm gonna start off this, this really emotional, but I think it's emotional time. So, you know, it, when I think of all those families that don't have safe places and, um, and struggling, they were struggling before the massive numbers of layoffs we've seen. And, um, and my heart just breaks. I think that um, you absolutely have the right perspective. And I mean, in, in terms of it being an emotional time, I completely agree. And I think that, you know, there's a huge scale for at, at which some people are experiencing this um, really profoundly and others where it is sort of more a downtime for people. And I think that wherever mm -hmm. somebody is on that scale, it's absolutely valid. And I think, um, you know, it, it completely makes sense to recognize that and to have compassion. So I really appreciate just you being forthright with it. So true. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think though, in times of great difficulty, people and communities do come together. and. Uh, and so I hope that when we look back on this, that we have continued to work within ourselves to find ways to help each other and lift each other up and, and do what we can to find the good opportunities. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, now, before we dig in too much further, I'd love to just give a little intro of you and Alberta's own marketplace to everybody who's watching. Uh, if you just want to tell them a little bit about yourself and about what you do. Yeah, I am. Um, I suppose I've been entre or entrepreneurial at heart my whole life. I was raised on a ranch by parents who were both at least four generations. Uh, into agriculture and so it's just in my blood <laughs> uh, by the time I was 10 years old I already was building a herd of cattle and at 16 I branched off in the 4-H program um, and started the business sense project and so I created a beef jerky business at that point in my life and that was my I guess my second real business and then after finishing university I worked for a couple of years in both nonprofit and for-profit sectors and, and realized pretty quickly that I wasn't very good at taking orders. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and so I began offering freelance graphic design services within the, um, the community that I was familiar with in agriculture and in livestock. And so it grew from freelance into a, I call it a boutique agriculture advertising agency and we were really fortunate to work with clients from around the world trying to help them build their businesses and maximize the value out of the product that they were selling um, but one of our clients was the SaskMate marketplace and we worked with them on their rebrand when they changed hands and I think that was I don't know 2010 2011 2012 somewhere in there and I thought at that time like Alberta should be showcasing Albertan made products and, and the talents of our people here. But the timing just wasn't right for me to be starting another business. And so the idea just sat in the back of my mind for years until I was in Canmore in uh, March 27th for my annual mountain restore session. And I, as always was surfing the internet looking for places to live and places to move to every year it was a it became a little stronger dream to move to Canmore and this property popped up that was dual zoned for commercial and residential and I thought well, what kind of business could I put in 
can work because I was kind of ready for a change and um, ready to move on. And so the idea came back to me for a locally made shop and why didn't this come to me earlier? Like Canmore is the perfect place for that and I can finally move to my dream town. And so it all came together. Well, I shouldn't say that. That property fell apart, but we found a, another location to be open for the summer of Canada 150 and knew that it would be a short term stay in that space, but hoped that something would open up. And, and as it turned out, it all did. But yeah that was how it got started and and now i think more than ever what drove me to create alberta's own was wanting to be able to be closer and more impactful to people's businesses and our goal with alberta's own is to create help our help our vendors to create sustainable and profitable businesses that they can pursue their passions and love what they're doing and be able to feed their families. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'll get all emotional again, but um, this is this is the time when that comes to fruition. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I've been in your shop so many times. I love it. But I think, you know, more more significantly, I think, what you said with that mission. I think that it's about a community and I think that, you know, it really shows because it has really resonated with people and you're just showcasing amazing vendors and amazing products. And so, yeah, I think, you know, it's kind of connecting to that bigger purpose of why you're doing it and why it matters. And yeah. So yeah. yeah. I love that. And then uh, I think that why always or no matter your business your why and your your mission your purpose always needs to stay at the center of your vision and uh, and how you're conducting yourself in your business at any given point in time and so that was maybe the hardest part in the first few days was thinking that everything that you've built and the good that you've done could all be be lost in the blink of an eye. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but then, <laughs> thanks to good friends and good people, you can uh, refocus. And, you know, we had a couple of days where there was a lot of fear and you work through that and, um, the unknowns and the uncertainties and and refocus on what you know you can do and uh, and controlling what you and so what we could control was doing our best to keep moving our vendors product keep and uh, and keep supporting them and their families and so you know we built an online or sorry we built a, a brick and mortar and we focused on that purposefully. Mm-hmm. I had a background in web and I knew there was, not I knew there, I recognized the opportunity and the, the value of a web platform and, and I knew it could be complementary to what we were doing. But in the first three years of business, I wanted to ensure that we were focused on our in-store customer experience mm-hmm. and really creating, um, a community of people who believe what we believe and and we have the opportunity in Canmore to connect with so many people from all over Alberta and around the world who are as dedicated to supporting local and supporting their neighbors as we are and so uh, we stayed focused for three years on building those relationships and building uh, our online relationships with them too through social media Mm -hmm. and continuing you know when they left the store that we were still connecting with them Um, but we purposefully chose not to pursue e-commerce for those three years in order to do that well and now we have the opportunity to 
get the e-commerce pillar going. Um, and so, yeah, going back to those first days, we looked at it that we needed to get online quickly to ensure there wasn't a, a huge gap where we couldn't keep continu or keep continuing to support them. And so we started with flash sales of one of a kind products on Instagram and Facebook, and people could just choose whichever item spoke to them and we'd ship it quickly. And while we were doing that, we were behind the scenes building the e-commerce site. And there's so many, like we have, we have nearly 150 vendors in the shop at any given point in time and at least 3,000 SKUs. And so there's a lot to get online. And a lot of those products simply aren't website friendly either. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we were working in the background on getting the e-commerce going, but knew there was going to be some limitation on the product offering that way. And so we first launched with the mystery boxes and have done a few different themes and a few different price or price points to allow people to choose what suits them best or um, gifts. And, and it also allowed us to be cognizant of the product that was on the shelf that had expiration dates coming up mm -hmm. and, and needed to be shared more quickly. So we launched the mystery boxes first and then are just continuing to add individual products uh, as quickly as we can. <laughs> and it's been really fun. We had one of my very first customers was from Texas, couple from Texas, and they had gotten married in Canmore and stayed for their honeymoon. And they must have come into the shop two or three times um, over the course of their visit back in summer of 2017. And, you know, we've shipped her a couple products over the years, but reconnecting when we launched the e-commerce site, she's been so supportive and so wonderful. And so being able to give people the opportunity to vote with their dollars for what they want their world to look like after this, I think is really important. And it took me a bit of time to let go of, I had a feeling of guilt with trying to sell product in a time of crisis mm -hmm. and when people are so financially um, extended at this but you also I think have a um, an obligation to allow people to make the choice for themselves yeah I completely agree with you there are going to be people who are not in the position to buy and then there are going to be people who genuinely want to support during this time so I think that like you said, it comes down to if, if the choice is theirs um, and then the way that you can best step forward is just to give that platform to your vendors and give that platform to, you know, have them have the option to connect with your customers if there's the appetite for business to happen. And yeah, I think um, it's fantastic that you were able to get that up and running. I think it proves that we were correct in our approach to building the relationships from the beginning you know maybe we could have generated more sales over the past three years having an online platform but um, i don't know that we would have been able to focus as effectively on the people who visited our shop and took the time and made made the choice to come in mm -hmm. we're just continuing to try to support all of our vendors you know we have a wide range from um, more production product oriented small businesses like Friday Sock Co and Routine Natural Deodorant and um, Jennifer Jones Skincare Lamb Soap Works those that are producing a consistent product we can easily um, move over to online sales and then we have a lot of artists and artisans who do one of a kind pieces. And so also trying to ensure that we can keep supporting them, even if their products are maybe not as e-commerce friendly for us, either from 
a shipping standpoint or um, or a listing standpoint. And so that was why we did the flash sales and we also can include them in the mystery boxes. Um, and it, the mystery box uh, feedback has been great because we, are, we do try, we ask questions and, uh, and try to tailor them for each individual person, whether it's for them or for a gift for someone. Um, but being able to share products with them that they might not have chosen for themselves, even if those items were on the website, you know, but they will find something new and be, uh, we can provide joy for them with something they might not have ever thought of buying for themselves. Yeah, I think there's a lot of really creative and interesting things that that can come out of that. But it sounds like you're giving people a lot of options and coming up with ways to make it fun for them to engage with you, which I think is really important. Yeah, well, and it's it, it's fun for us and for them. I hope you know, like we have such a great time choosing the products to go in each mystery box collection for the person that yeah like we're missing having people come through the door and being able to visit with them and there's just something special about seeing the canadian rockies through a visitor's eyes every day um, so yeah we we do miss that aspect for certain but the the mystery boxes especially have been a source of joy for us and and I think they're spreading joy for the recipients as well. And going out to, you know, elderly parents and nurses and um, and friends and people who are celebrating big birthdays and maybe aren't celebrating them in the way that they anticipated. Or a couple, we had people send a box last week to a couple who were supposed to be getting married in Canmore this weekend and have obviously had to cancel that and so yeah it's get it's great to get to bring a smile to people during a time like this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, what advice would you have for other business owners who are navigating this too and you know maybe at a different stage than than your store or you know or even at the same stage but what sort of thoughts would you have for those folks? I think, um, you know, obviously emotion ties into a lot of decisions that I, that I consider. Um, this is your business and you want it to survive and you have to make the viable decisions and the best decisions to ensure that happens. And so having professional advice, you know, we have an amazing accountant who can help us navigate through some of the challenges um, and opportunities that are being offered. Um, and then the legal advice when it comes to that in terms of um, for us, for um, our lease, because, <laughs> you know, and we will, continue to keep our lease but um, I have had friends who had to make the hard decision to let theirs go right now most of our leases are very expensive storage space and if it is not uh, it's not a valuable long-term decision because we don't know how long this is going to go on for um, then you have to make sometimes the hard decisions around that as well and get the advice um, from council that's going to serve you best in those decisions. Um, so yeah, we work with. Uh, I have all the puppies here now. <laughs> uh, we work with very closely during times like these with uh, with our professional advisors. Um, they're versed in these things, and and they're worth every penny. They'll save you money in the long run. Good advice for sure, I think. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to share with everyone before we kind of get into how people can connect with you and Alberta's own marketplace online? Uh, that's a very good question, Afton. There's so many things. <laughs> um, 
I do think a little bit about, you know, I, I threw my life up in the air three years ago. I had no idea where it was going to land. Uh, it completely changed everything from where I lived to what I was doing to the people in my life. And um, I think of where I might be in this situation now had I not made that change. Um, and I'm just so glad that I did and that I've had the support. Um, change is certainly scary and pursuing what your heart knows to be right for you is so scary, especially if you have stability and, um, and comfort where you're at. But I think at the end of the day, there's nothing more important than ensuring that you do the best you can in this life with what you're meant to do. Absolutely. And I mean, on a selfish note, I'm really glad that you did that too, because I'm glad that I've met you. Um, <laughs> and I'm so grateful for you coming on here today to talk about this and to share some really beautiful insights with people. So thank you for that. Well, um, thank you for the opportunity, but I really enjoyed it. And I hope that it serves other people as well. Um, okay, well, I don't want to end the conversation before we let everyone know how to best connect with you and um, with your store right now. Yeah, our website is Alberta's Own Market at or dot com, Alberta's Own Market dot com, and uh, you can connect with us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and a little bit on Twitter. Not very often, I won't lie. Uh, at Alberta's Own Market, and. And yeah, we're trying to keep everyone abreast of what's happening at the shop and once in a while a little behind the scenes with Hayes the shop dog. Because awesome. <laughs> uh, his life has been impacted too. He's not getting nearly enough pets anymore. And so, yeah. Yeah. He wants to share his life as well. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and then, and then, yeah, just, just the mystery boxes too. I love Oh that. yeah. The mystery boxes. So we'll probably continue evolving those. Um, and you know, everything is a constant evolution. You, you just try and sometimes don't get it right the first time and, and make change, but they are, we currently have, I think eight themes and different price points within each theme and they're available on the website and you can have them shipped to anyone that you would like, have them shipped to yourself if you need a little pick me up. And, um, yeah, so I think we'll come out with a Mother's Day one in the next little while and I would foresee that at some point um, we'll start launching ones that, uh, that are aligned with partners as well. I like that. Well, um, thank you again so much. And uh, I'll be back um, with more interviews from business owners, marketers, and communicators over the weeks to come. Uh, so thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks again so much, Laura. Thank you, Afton.